Welcome to our video on the birds of Lyonia Preserve. Here we will be going over the top 10 birds you may come across while walking around in the preserve. This video is perfect for anyone, whether it is your first time here or your 400th time. You never know what you might see. Lyonia Preserve is 360 acres of scrub habitat located in Deltona, Florida. Now with the exception of one, the birds on this list are not just exclusive to Florida scrub. Some can be found all over the state or even country. This list is more of a starting guide to what you might see. The Florida scrub jay is Florida's only endemic bird species. This means that they are found nowhere else in the world. They live in family groups of up to eight birds. Scrub jays mate for life and are cooperative breeders, which means that the young of the breeding pair sticks around for a few years to help raise the new offspring. There are two common places to keep an eye out for scrub jays. The first is perched way at the tops of trees and shrubs. This bird is playing a special role. It is the lookout, or sentinel. They keep their eyes peeled for any possible danger, like a hawk. The second place is hopping along the ground. Scrub jays love acorns. They can store, or cache, like this one is doing, up to 6,000 acorns throughout the year. They even remember where most of them are and will repeatedly check on their condition. Did you know that the scrub jay does not migrate? That is right, this native bird usually stays within five miles of where it was first born. The brown thrasher is the only thrasher found east of the Rocky Mountains in central Texas, identified by its beautiful reddish-brown color and streaked underside. These birds live in dense thickets and shrubs and spend a majority of their time on the ground. It forages for insects, berries, and nuts by using its bill to dig through the leaves in the underbrush. Brown thrashers are actually incredible mimics. Their repertoire of songs is over 1,100. They will usually repeat a phrase twice before moving on, but their most common call is a high-pitched smacking sound. Toeys are found throughout Florida living in brushy or scrubby habitats. Usually heard before they are seen, they spend most of their time on the ground, vigorously scratching at the leaves looking for food. They are sexually dimorphic. This means that males and females exhibit different colors. Look for males with black feathers on their head, throat, and back, while females have the reddish-brown feathers on the same area of the body. A subspecies of towhee found in Florida has a yellow eye instead of the common red eye. Fun fact, a group of towhees is known as a teapot or tangle of towhees. Their call is a twink sound and as you are about to hear is very common. Did you know that the northern mockingbird is the state bird of Florida? These slender gray birds stay in Florida all year long and are known to be fierce defenders of their nests. Mockingbirds are incredible mimics with over 200 songs in their repertoire, often repeating a phrase three times before moving on. Not only do they mimic other birds, but even other animals, insects, and machines. The blue-gray gnatcatcher is a tiny songbird found in forests and scrublands, easily identified by the blue-gray color on their back, white underside, and black tail. These birds are very active, often seen flying between branches looking for food. However, their size and speed makes them not the easiest bird to spot, hence why I've slowed down the footage. A blue-gray gnatcatcher's diet is mainly comprised of insects and spiders, known to hover and catch its prey right out of the air or even from a spider's web, building multiple nests in a season. This helps against predation, and materials from previous years is often reused to build new nests. There are two types of vultures you will likely see high in the sky above the preserve, the black and the turkey. The black vulture is completely black, minus the white color found on the underside of its wingtips, while the turkey vulture has a red head and silver flight feathers on the underside of its wings. Black vultures are known to live in close family groups, even sharing food and roosting together at night. They do not build nests, usually laying eggs right on the ground, often in dark places like caves or tree cavities. They are also slightly smaller than the more solitary turkey vulture. The turkey vulture has the superior sense of smell between the two. Black vultures have been known to follow turkey vultures to food, for they share a diet of mainly carrion, dead or decaying animals. Both birds are usually silent, lacking a syrinx, or a bird's vocal organ. The most sounds they ever make are hisses, grunts, and grumbles. The two most common hawk species you will come across are the red-tailed and the red-shouldered. Keep your eyes on the tops of telephone poles and high branches. These birds of prey are usually perched scanning the area for their next meal. They share a similar diet of small mammals, reptiles, and birds. 
red-tailed hawks identified by their brown coloration and red tail, while the red-shouldered hawk has a banded tail and translucent crescents at their wingtips. The red-tailed hawk has a very recognizable call. Used in movies and on TV to symbolize the wilderness, it is often dubbed over the bald eagle because it is considered a much more intimidating cry. Did you know that Florida has its own non-migratory sandhill crane population? The Florida sandhill crane does not leave the state. These tall gray birds have a long neck and a red patch of skin on their heads. Found in freshwater wetlands, pastures, and urban areas, sandhill cranes mate for life and often travel together. Their diet consists of seed, grain, aquatic plants, berries, and insects. Sandhill cranes have a very distinct trumpet-like call. They can be heard from great distances, up to two and a half miles away. These two birds can be very elusive, northern bobwhite quail and the loggerhead shrike. These small round quail are brown and white in color, with males having a distinct black and white pattern on their heads. These birds are social, usually foraging on the ground under low vegetation for food. At night they will circle up together with their tails pointing inward. Did you know that a group of bob whites is called a covey? Slightly smaller than a robin, the loggerhead shrike is a songbird known as a butcher bird. This bird is gray and white with a black mask and a bill with a hook on the end. They live in open areas with scattered shrubs and trees. The shrike perches on utility poles and fence posts, preying on insects, birds, lizards, and small mammals. Once caught, the shrike immobilizes larger prey, sometimes even as large as themselves. By impaling them on sharp objects, they prefer to nest in thorny vegetation as a form of protection from predators. These birds are not found in the scrub all year long, usually just wintering here. Migration is when a species moves from one place to another, usually happens seasonally and over long distances. Reasons can include for food, nesting, and temperature changes. Migratory species are super important. They act as pest control, help with seed distribution, they're pollinators, they're also a food source for other animals. Some of our migrating species include robins, often seen roosting in large numbers, known for their cheery songs and orange chest, cedar wax wings, one of the few North American birds that specialize in eating fruit year-round, and warblers. There are actually several species of warblers, and in some cases it can be hard to tell them apart. But species include the black and white and the palm. Thank you all for joining us today. This is only a small number of the birds that you might encounter while out in the preserve, but I hope you all have gained a newfound appreciation for the birds who call this place home. Until next time.